Hi again, this is Jeff, your protopie expert answering your protopie questions. A little while back, I made a video that showed you how to make a custom transition that took it beyond just the default slide in, slide out, fade, or etc. that options were available when you use the jump trigger. Protopie's newest version, version 6.1, which was just released, introduced a new feature called Smart Jump, which automates pretty much everything that I taught you how to do. Uh, so in today's video, I actually want to do a comparison between the two to see if it actually saves us the amount of time that we, that we would hope that it would. So let's take a look at what we built. Our experience here was simulating Gmail's inbox on your phone. And when you tap on the search field, you get this animated transition that takes you from one scene to another. And then when you tap the back button, that animation is reversed to take you back to the inbox. And if you recall, there was a lot going on to make that happen. We had a whole bunch of responses to create the animation to animate from our beginning to our end state. And then we did an instant jump over to the second scene. And then when we jumped back, we had to use a hack to detect when we were jumping back and then added a whole bunch of responses now to reverse our animation. With Smart Jump, you have to do so much less, and it works much like Smart Animate in Figma or Magic Move in, in Apple's Keynote. And if you've used either of those, you're really going to understand how Smart Jump works in an instant. What I want to do is I want to take a look at Smart Jump and try to duplicate exactly what we've done here and see if it actually will give us exactly what we want with less work. So let's jump in. If we preview our starting point here, if you tap just on search in mail, it just does an instant jump over to the, the search screen. We'd like it to animate in the same way we made it work this way. Okay, so we just have an instant jump. Protopie has given us a new feature called Smart. So in addition to all of the other transitions, fade, pop, slide in, slide out, flip, or instant, we have this one called Smart. And if I choose Smart, this will now animate items between the two scenes. And it essentially it does this by looking for items with the same name. Look, It's looking for layers with the same names between the two scenes. And then it looks at the difference between the properties and automatically animates between the two of them. Right now, I don't think it's going to do too much. I think we're just going to get a little bit of a fade out, which still looks a little bit smoother. But you can see when I jump from one to the other, we're just getting a like just an, an instant cut here. It's not really doing a whole lot here. Let's start working out how we can make this work and animate the way we would like. So the first thing I want to do is when we jump from one scene to the next, these items here, Compose and the bottom menu here, they slide down. Let's just take a look over here. And if we tap on here, you can see they, they slid down. It happened a little bit fast, but you can see that happening. So let's take these two. I'm going to copy these two. And I'm going to go over to the search scene, and I want to copy them here. Because without them here, Protopie has no idea what the end state is. And let's just move them down a bit. I think we move it to about there. Now if we go back to our scene one here and we do a preview, you see, okay, so it is moving those things down. So there you go. With very little work, we already have part of our transition done. Let's continue on and add in some of our other elements here. Another thing that happens, there's a very subtle, but it does happen, a brief little fade down. You can see it as, watch below as the search, uh, as the search field expands down. You can see things get a little bit darker. There's like a, there's a veil. I don't know if you, you notice it, but the, essentially there's a veil that starts to darken the UI behind, uh, behind the search field. So that, if we go over to our inbox here, we have, so we don't have this veil, but let's just copy it from our finished version of the other one here. We'll just copy this guy here. Veil, we'll go over to here. We'll put it, I think we want it over top of the footer here, I think. So now we have our veil. It's set to opacity zero. And we'll go over to our search field and we're gonna put it here and I want to maintain the same order. I don't want things switching order because that adds to a little bit visual glitches. So make sure you keep things uh, ordered in the same way. So I want to make sure the veil is over top of the footer and the category title here. So let's go over here, change the veil. We'll change it to, I believe it was an opacity of 40. So if we go back to our inbox here and we tap the search field, okay, we can see it is darkening down our UI. Let's make it now so the search field expands. 
So we need to, once again, I believe that was the header base. Yeah, let's copy that. So let's copy that. We'll go to search, paste it here. It needs to expand to the full screen. I think we have things layered the wrong way here. So we want the search field or the, the header base. Let's put that above veil but below search input. So it should be below search input. There's our search prompt and there's the, the header base. Okay, so now let's preview this. Okay, it's pretty close. You see we're getting a we're getting a bit of a crossfade between the search search and mailbox here and the one up here. And that's because they're not the same thing. On the search field, we've used an input type layer. On the inbox, it's just a regular text layer. So Protopie is not going to animate the properties between the two because they're not the same thing. We need to make sure that they are the same thing. So let's, on this side, let's copy our search input field. And we'll go to our inbox and we'll put it in the same place as our search prompt. So if we, let's make sure it's in the same place. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of this old search prompt here. And we have to change now our tap over here because it was on the old search field. So sat to, uh, tap and we want search input. Let's preview this now. And there we go. Now we have that moving as opposed to, as opposed to the crossfade. Okay. Now here's where things get a little bit more tricky. Our animation, let's go back over here. Pay attention to both the hamburger menu over here and the avatar icon over here. If I tap in the search mail, then you see the icons do this 180 degree rotation. And if I click back here and the avatar fades out and then the, uh, the microphone fades in. And that's a sequenced animation. So that fades down before the microphone fades in. Let's handle that one first because that's a little bit more straightforward. Now, when you're using Smart Jump, you can't do this sequenced animation. All of your animation just happens at the same time. So we can't do that sequence where the avatar fades down first and then the microphone fades in. Uh, and if we take a look at our experience here, you're going to see it's just a crossfade between the two. So we can make this a little bit different. What we can do is make it look like it morphs a little bit. And again, we are going to make sure that our, our, our layers are in, the, uh, are in both scenes. So if we copy the avatar here, we'll go over to the search field and I'm going to paste it where the microphone icon is. I'm going to paste it right on top of there and then I'm going to move it. So essentially what I want to happen, if I turn its opacity down, I want it to fade down and I want it to move into the same spot as where the microphone is. Let's just center it a little bit better there. And then let's copy the microphone and pay attention to the layering we have here. So avatar is on top of mic icon. So let's just make sure that we keep the same layering order. I'm going to copy the microphone icon, go over to inbox, and I'm going to paste it here. And I want to drag it below the avatar. And once again, let's move it so that way it's more or less centered with the avatar and we'll turn its opacity down. So what's going to happen is when this animates from inbox to search, the avatar will fade down and move into the spot where the microphone icon was. And when I animate back, we'll see this when uh, when we turn on Smart Jump from the other way, it, the microphone is going to animate down towards where the avatar is and fade down. So it's going to look more like a morph as opposed to a sequenced fade down, fade, fade up. Let's preview that. Okay, a little bit. Nicer. Let's turn on, by the way, let's turn on the smart jump on the second scene so we can see, by the way, uh, there's not a whole lot we need to do uh, in order to reverse our animation. So let's just change this to smart. If I start on inbox and I preview this, I tap on search and mail. And if I tap the back button, you're going to see everything just animates backwards. Very little work. And I've got almost the exact same experience that I had before. Now let's handle the animation of the chevron, the hamburger to the chevron. Let's go take a look at our animation over here again. So when we click on search and mail, they both rotate clockwise. Both are 180 degree rotation. The hamburger fades out, the chevron fades in. 
Let's see if we can duplicate that. Like we did before, we have to have both elements in both scenes. So first of all, we need to make sure we set the origin point of this item to its bottom left corner, because that's how it rotates. It rotates on that bottom left corner, and it's going to rotate 180 degrees. So I'm going to copy hamburger. I'm going to go over search, and I'm going to paste it in place where it was. And we want to make sure its origin point is bottom left, and I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. We'll set its opacity down to zero. And now that should animate. Okay, so we did. We saw the hamburger rotate down 180 degrees clockwise and fade down. So that's already doing part of what we need. We need to do the same thing with the chevron here. So let's copy that. And again, we want to make sure that it's the anchor point is in the right place. So the origin, we want bottom right for this because that is the anchor point that it rotates on. We'll copy that. We'll go back to inbox. I'm going to paste it. We want it to be rotated 180 degrees and we want its opacity to be zero. So we should see it rotate up and the hamburger icon rotate down. Let's see if that worked. Okay, so not exactly what we were expecting. The hamburger icon rotates the proper way. It rotates clockwise. But the chevron, it's rotating counterclockwise. And unfortunately, when you're working with Smart Jump, you don't have control over which way this is going to rotate. Um, so this is the first thing that we need to accept with the way this works, is you have less control over the animation when you're doing Smart Jump. In the similar way that we couldn't do uh, we couldn't do the sequenced animation, we couldn't do the fade down of the avatar first and then the fade up of the microphone, we can't control which direction that these items rotate when they animate. Protopie is just doing this automatically for us. So in order to make that work in a better way, we're going to need to do things a little bit differently here. Here's how I am going to handle this. We've got our chevron and our hamburger, and I'm going to put them together close to each other. And I'm going to group them. And let's set the origin point to be the left center point. So that's where it's going to rotate on. And uh, let's call, call this combined hamburger and chevron. And let's go over here. We'll go over to our search side, and I'm going to paste it. Where, where's our chevron here? Paste it there. I'm going to remove the old hamburger, and we are going to get rid of the other chevron in a second. Um, but what I want to do is let's now switch the opacity of the, of the hamburger and the chevron. So the opacity of the hamburger, I'm going to put down to 0. Chevron, I'm going to put up to 100. I'm going to rotate it not the chevron, I'm going to rotate the whole container 180 degrees, oops, 180, and I'm going to move it into the same spot. So that way it's going to end exactly where the, the chevron is in this part of the composition. And then we don't now need the old chevron. And let's see how that looks. So we go back to our inbox, I tap search and mail, and now we're getting that rotation back. And if I turn back, if I click back, okay, so I'm trying to click back and nothing is happening. And that's because we've now broken our back tap. So we need to choose the, where is it? We want the chevron. Let me just search for it here. Chevron back, here we go. We want that. And let's just make sure that we've got, yeah, we still have the touch area around there. Okay, let's go back to inbox here and let's preview this again search and mail, and if I tap back, and now we're getting that animation. Now there's a couple of big benefits to doing it this way. If I want to change the speed of this animation, I only need to do it in one place, and that's in my jump here. Right now, this is set to happen over 0.2 seconds, and let's say I want to slow this down. Let's say, oops, let's say I want to slow this down. Let's say I want to have this happen over one second. Well, I can do that. I'll go back to my preview, tap there, and there we go. Now it goes slower. That's a bit too slow. Let's change it to 0.5, and we'll preview it again. There we go. Now I have this happening over 0.5 seconds. I'll have to do the same thing in the jump on the search side if I want that to happen at the same speed. Go back to my preview, and there we go. 
So everything still now happens as it did before, with the small caveats that this animation with the avatar is a little bit different. But it's kind of cool that morph morph effect is not uh, it's not a bad experience. I think it kind of works quite well. But I have this I have this amazing benefit here where I can change its speed in just just by changing it in one place. If I wanted to change my animation speed in the way I did it previously, I would have to change all of these items here and I'd have to change the timing of my jump. So let's say if I wanted to do this, I can speed this up a little bit. So let's say I want to do those and these ones, I want to have this happen over 0.5 seconds instead of 0.2. Yep, can do. My jump now needs to go up to 0.5 seconds, and I need to adjust these individually. So this would be 0.25, and I need to adjust this, and my duration back to 0.25. So it can be done, and it's not that bad, but you can imagine if you had a lot of animation going on, this could be pretty tedious, and then multiply that, that out by however many scenes you want to adjust. And don't forget, I would have to do the same thing for my return animation as well. So huge benefit to using jump where you can just change the duration by 0.2 seconds. One more real benefit we can do here is we can also delay that animation with just one step here. So if we preview this from this side, it starts animating the second I click on the back icon here. Would be nice if I could wait for the keyboard to hide first before it moved back. So it would be a two step animation. I tap it keyboard would slide down, then I would transition back. Well, that's really easy to do when you're using Smart Jump because all I need to do is just delay this a little bit. So let's try 0.2 seconds. Let's see what that looks like. Preview here. I'm in Search in, in Mail. And if I tap the back chevron, there we go. Now I have that two-stage animation. So there you go. There are some trade-offs with, work, with working with Smart Jump, and that's you have less control over the animation. So like I mentioned before, we couldn't sequence the animation between the avatar to the microphone. They needed to animate at the same time, and we needed to be a bit creative with how we handled the animation between the chevron and the hamburger in order to have that consistent, both of them rotating at the same time. But otherwise, small price to pay for a long-term gain here. Now it's really easy to change my, uh, my animation. I didn't have to use that hack with returning to the scene. Protopie just figured it out for us. So when I preview this, there we go. I have almost an identical experience to what I had before. And this is much easier to manage and change if I want to. And if I want to change the aspects of the animation, it really is just a matter of moving items around in either scene. So I can change the start position by, let's say I wanted this, let's say I wanted the compose and the footer to animate completely off screen. Right now I have the compose button down here. So let's take the footer and the compose button and I can have them animate further down screen and now that's changed my transition. So if I go back here and I tap on search and mail, those two items animate completely off screen and come back to their regular spot when I come back. There you go. Easy as pie. Custom transitions using Protopie's new fantastic smart jump feature. If you've run into a snag with one of your pies and you'd like to ask us for help, check out the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.